Dr. Kanish Zahra to welcome the gathering. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. It's my privilege to welcome our honorable pro vice chancellor, Dr. Khaja M. Shahid Sahab, and our registrar, Professor S. M. Rehmatullah Sahab. I welcome all the participants and the guests for this valedictory function of the two-day national seminar on educational development of minorities, policy initiatives, and impact. At the outset, I would like to place on record that this seminar would not have been possible without the help of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, our Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, sir, and our Registrar, Professor S. M. Rahmatullah Sahab. We are very thankful to you all, sir, for all the support and the encouragement that we got right from the beginning for this seminar. Uh, and uh, uh, right from the initiation to uh, the finale of the seminar. Now, this would not have been possible without your help and support uh, for making this seminar a grand success. I can tell you that, I can vouch for it, that this seminar has been a great success for us. At the same time, I would also like to mention that this seminar was also co-sponsored by the Ministry of Minority Affairs, Government of India. So uh, we thank the ministry for their support as well. Now, regarding the seminar, I would like to say a few words, sum up a few words here for the seminar. The inaugural function began with the speech of the guest of honor, Dr. Fazul Ghafoor, president of Muslim Education Society, Calicut, Kerala, followed by the keynote address delivered by Professor Amitabh Kundu, Professor of Economic Studies, JNU, and Chairperson, Post Sachar Evaluation Committee, New Delhi. The presidential address was given by Dr. Khaja M. Shahed, Honorable PVC Manu. The seminar had six sessions. It was interactive, and we witnessed a lot of enthusiasm from the audience and uh, presenters. The response for the seminar was tremendous and it had participants coming from different parts of the country. Country, like uh, we had participants from Kashmir, Kerala, Assam, Maharashtra, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, and other states as well. The first technical session had the theme, Minority Education Issues and Challenges. And it was chaired by Professor Mausam Ali, Professor Department of Political Science, HCU, and co-chaired. And sorry, it was only chaired by uh, Professor Mausam Ali uh, uh, from uh, HCU. The second session had the theme, uh, Educational Inclusion of Minorities, Regional Reflections. And this session was chaired by Professor Rama Brahmam, Professor Political Science, HCU. The third session dealt with the theme, Policy Initiatives and Impact on Minorities Education. And it was being chaired by uh, Professor Sudhir Jacob George, Professor in Political Science, HCU. The fourth session, that is for the day two function today, began with higher and technical education among minorities, and it was chaired by Professor Sufi Ali, Professor Department of Public Administration, OU, and it was co-chaired by Professor Ishwaraya, Professor in Political Science, HCU. The theme in the fifth session was on Urdu and Madarsa Education, chaired by Professor Abdul Rahim Vijapuri, uh, Professor AMU, and chaired by Dr. Khayyam Manu. The sixth session uh, dealt with girls' education among minorities, and the chairperson for this session was Professor Srinivas Reddy, uh, Department of Public Administration, Kakatiya University, co-chaired by Professor M.A. Kishore, uh, Professor Political Science, uh, AMU. A detailed report of all the technical sessions will be presented by the rapporteur after the welcome address. Uh, I would like to say that the outcome of the seminar was that it was able to focus on the themes 
like education of minorities, policy initiatives, girls' education, challenges of uh, minority education, and then madarsa education, higher and technical education as well, thus fulfilling the aims and objectives of the seminar. The sub-themes were well crafted to address all these problems encountering in this space. As our honorable PVC Sahab had uh, said initially that uh, the deliberations would be very fruitful of the seminar and uh, I would like to uh, tell you that sir that we, uh, the seminar has been very successful and it was a platform for discussion and debate and led to fruitful deliberations uh, which are of immense importance and which I feel will definitely help the policy makers and will look definitely look into the problem of educational development of minorities, policies, initiatives and how policies ma uh, policy makers can go in for much more and effective policies. I feel the outcome of the seminar, uh, the paper presentations and the different themes and the suggestions that we got from the paper presenters would definitely uh, lead us to a grand success and that is what uh, we will also be presenting a report to uh, the government on the deliberations of the seminar. So I would like uh, to thank you and uh, thank all the participants on the behalf of the university and the department. Thank you very much. Now I request our PhD scholar Ahmadi to present the bouquet to our chief guest, Pro VC, Dr. Kaja Shahid Sa. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ahmadi. Now I request Saba, our first year MA, to present the bouquet to our registrar, Dr. Ramatullah Sa. Please accept it, sir. I'd like to invite Mr. Fayaz Ahmad, Assistant Professor, Department of History, to present the reporter's report. Assalamu uh, Am I audible? Uh, respected uh, Pro Vice Chancellor Saab, respected Registrar Saab, uh, Dr. Najiullah Saab, uh, uh, Dr. Kaniz Zahra Saab, uh, it gives me immense pleasure to present a detailed report about the two-day long seminar uh, regarding uh, issues uh, with regard to the educational development of minorities, policy initiatives, and PACT. To be very frank, it's, uh, it's not an easy job to summarize the uh, two-day uh, seminar in, in, in some in few minutes, but I'll, I'll try my best to, you know, just give a uh, full detailed uh, and illustrated report about the different sessions. Uh, the inaugural session, the inaugural session, uh, uh, I think it, it set the tone for the seminar. It was, it, it began with uh, uh, the recitation of Quran, of course, and, and then uh, by a brief introduction regarding the aims and objectives of uh, the seminar by uh, the HOD ma'am, Dr. Kaniz Zehra, and with uh, the good wish of uh, our Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Kaja Mahmoud Shahid Saab, and uh, our Registrar Saab. Uh, from the, from the uh, very beginning, uh, I mean, the two lectures in the, in the beginning, they just simply set the tone for this seminar, and, uh, you know, one could easily uh, sense the rapt attention which was given to the two initial inaugural uh, you know, lectures. The first lecture was given by our guest of honor, Dr. Fazal Ghafoor Sahab, who, was, who is the president of uh, Muslim Educational Society, Calicut, Kerala. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, one could just sense the attention and uh, uh, you know, appreciation that, that uh, that lecture got. Dr. Puzzle Gafoor, I mean, one could, you know, it, it, he was, it, this, his, his lecture was a kind of a uh, report from the actual ground regarding the activities of his society uh, in Kerala, 
uh, especially in the educational sector and other parts of the uh, other parts of India. Uh, he gave a very exhaustive and comprehensive background to the harmonious composition of Kerala society, uh, tracing its long history uh, from from uh, you know from from uh, from a, from a, from a, from a long background. Uh, his main emphasis was on the issues that there is no minority and majority notion in Kerala society. Uh, he emphasized or he pressed for the Kerala model of development, Kerala model of inclusive development to be imitated in rest of India. Uh, he also stressed that there have been benefits from reservations and from uh, other government schemes which the government of Kerala, which uh, uh, the government of Kerala, governments of Kerala have been able to utilize properly. Uh, with regard to the Sachar Committee, uh, Sach Sachar Committee report recommendations, he he pointed out that these recommendations were, you know, uh, if if they were implemented anywhere in India, it was Kerala, or for some time it was in West Bengal, but it was mainly Kerala uh, state where they were implemented on on a very you know on the, on the maximum possible scale. He also uh, he also he also argued that giving a minority status in name would mean nothing unless and until it's not implemented at the at, at the ground level. Uh, in the end, uh, Dr. Fazal Gafoor also stressed that uh, <coughs> there is a need to uh, to 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 work uh, for for the NGOs for the for the Muslim NGOs to go to go in areas which. You know which which they have been doing uh, for for so long. Uh, he just mentioned two N NGOs in India which are doing uh, educational services. One, his own NGO, uh, which is which is Muslim Educational Society and the Alamin Trust in Karnataka. After that, we had a very provocative and very informative uh, keynote address by Professor Amitabh Kondu, who is who is at the CSRD Center for Study of Regional Development, JNU. He is presently the visiting fellow at the Institute of Human Development. I mean, he, as a chairperson of the post Sachar Evaluation Committee, uh, presented his 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 ideas. I mean, his his observations regarding the post Sachar Committee uh, report uh, very lucidly. Even though he is he 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 is an empiricist, he uh, declared it at the very beginning that he deals with statistics, but that did not deter him to you know present his. Uh, uh, observations in a very lucid manner. From the very beginning, he put his faith in secular and inclusive composition of India by saying that diversity is our strength, not a weakness. Uh, he also qualified the Brookings Institute remark, which has said that the 21st century would belong to India. He pointed out, he argued that unless and until the regional uh, disparities or the regional aspirations as well as communitarian aspirations are not met out. This observation or this remark will not stand its ground. He emphasized that adequate investment in sickle development is very necessary in India. At the same time, uh, a thorough and lucid presentation of the work done with the committee regarding the position of uh, Muslim minorities in India uh, was given. Uh, he pointed out, which was very interesting for the audience to uh, to hear, that the educational inputs which have been put into uh, Muslim minority uh, community in India have not been converted into productive outcomes as compared to the investments which have been made in medical uh, services with regard to Muslim minorities in India. Uh, this was, I mean, one of his very uh, prime observations which he made out of the uh, report. He also informed the gathering that uh, the recommendations, the three main recommendations they made to the government of India uh, are there should be no distinction or no discrimination on the basis of religious affiliation in terms of jobs. One. The second, that there should be a sub-quota for minorities within the OBC category. 
The third, which is which which uh, I think which was the most important out of the, out, out of these three recommendations was that they have suggested to the government of India that they should introduce a diversity index, which should be applied to all institutions in India, whether they be private or whether they be uh, government-run institutions. And periodically, this diversity index should be checked whether the institutions are following this index or not. And if, the, if it's found out that the institu institutions are not adhering to this uh, diversity index, their incentives should be stopped or curtailed. Uh, this, he said, is essential to save the secular fabric of India. Above all, Professor Amitabh Kundu, in his very uh, flamboyant and very informative manner, said that the Muslim community needs what he said, an assurance of belonging uh, mainly from the Indian state, which uh, I think is, is a very uh, you know, sharp observation to, to record. In the vote of thanks, Dr. Najiullah made an important remark by saying that being a minority is not a disadvantage. Presently, in India, being a minority is not a disadvantage. He pointed out that the Kerala Christians and the Parsi community, they have amply shown it that minority status or minority, being a minority in India is, is nowhere, that, you know, it, it would not stop you from, uh, you know, from discrimination or from any other uh, obstacles. With regard to the technical sessions, the first technical session, uh, its theme was minority education issues and challenges. Uh, it was chaired by Professor Mozam Ali of uh, University of Hyderabad uh, with his calm demeanor and even with the shortage of time that he uh, managed it very uh, properly uh, with some pithy and humorous remarks from uh, Professor Abdul Rahim Vijapuri. Uh, Professor Vijapuri, the, uh, uh, in, his, in his paper suggested that Muslims have, Muslims have forgotten the first revolution which, which, you know, which, which emphasized the acquiring of knowledge or ikra. Uh, Professor uh, M. B. Muktadir, chairman Rahat Foundation, uh, made, uh, made, a, made a statement or uh, argued that the political slogan, Bijli, Sadak, Pani, should be replaced with Education, employment, and employability. Uh, education should focus on employable skills. As he said, they have this slogan, Hunar se, Hunar hai to rozgar hai. Uh, Dr. Mushahid, whose paper uh, focused on emphasis on quality education. There was one paper by Nawaz Noor, who pointed out that there is no bar in Islam on acquiring knowledge. And at the same time, he said that Education is the most powerful weapon in modern times. Uh, K. Tejaswani had a very interesting paper comparing the Urdu medium schools and Telugu medium schools in, uh, in, in, uh, in Andhra region. Uh, in, the, in these case studies, the, the outcome of these case studies, he pointed out that financial there are lot of, lots of financial difficulties, especially in Urdu medium schools which the Telugu medium schools uh, do not face. Uh, Dr. Tariq Masudi, uh, uh, in his paper, suggested that uh, slogans like universe, unity and diversity and other slogans would, would not certainly help unless and until there is not what he called as educational inclusiveness in India. Uh, with regard to the technical session second, which was uh, on the theme of educational inclusion of minorities, uh, especially focused on regional reflections. Uh, this this, this uh, was uh, chaired by Professor Ram Brahman of HCU. Uh, Akhtar al-Islam, whose paper was uh, focused on, whose paper was based on, uh, whose paper was based on Assam region, he, he suggested that in the midst of migration and in the midst of exclusion, education is a luxury. Uh, Dr. Zahur Gilani uh, based his uh, uh, research on, on, on the very uh, far-flung area of uh, Jammu and Kashmir region, uh, namely Shupaya district. Uh, he suggested that 
there is a need to apply diverse methods for providing education. It's certainly not uh, possible to, to put a straight jacket uh, educational system in place. At, at different places, there are different difficulties, situations, which uh, cannot be simply uh, managed by, uh, by a straight jacketed uniform formula. Muzammil Ahaddar, whose work was based on Falah Arm Trust, uh, his paper also suggested that there are difficulties in running educational institutes in a, in a conflict zone. Uh, in, a, in a very vibrant question-answer session, Professor Sudhir Jacob uh, pointed out that quality education has to be ensured for competing globally. I mean, you cannot, you have to put a uh, you know, uh, cap to the reservations. Uh, there was a general co consensus uh, in the question-answer session that the creamy layer concept with regard to the reservation, has to be revisited. Uh, in, in the third technical session, uh, Professor Sudhir Jacob uh, uh, focused on the issues uh, regarding minority uh, status, regarding, regarding minor problems with regard to Christian minority in India. Uh, uh, similarly, there were papers by Dr. Najeeul Lasser, Dr. Uh, Dastagir Basha and uh, Mahbub Basha on the educational uh, issues focus, focusing on uh, the contemporary Andhra Pradesh. Uh, with regard to the fourth technical session, which was held, which was, which was, which uh, the theme of which was uh, higher and technical education among minorities, uh, this session was chaired by Professor Sophie Ali and uh, co-chaired by Professor Ishwaraya. Uh, Dr. Vishwanathan, who presented a paper on Dalit Christians arguing that the Dalits uh, were doubly deprived in India. Even before their uh, pre-conversion times, they were Dalits. Post-conversion, they're, they're facing the problem of not being able to get the reservation status. Uh, Dr. Najeeul uh, uh argued for a, what he called as a saturation point formula, uh, which the Andhra Pradesh government has been successfully able to implement with regard to giving the uh, scholarships to desire, desiring candidates. Uh, out of this session, there were some very good uh, suggestions which, which Professor Sophie Ali, as, as chair, uh, uh, you know, uh, pointed out by saying that uh, the minority minorities need a security, preferably. I mean, first uh, uh, from where, from where they, they they should get it is the government of India. Then, second thing which uh, Professor Sophie Lee pointed was that tribal girls are more interested in education. I think it, it came out of the experience of Professor Sudhir Jacob while his work in Nehu in, in Northeast. Uh, then there was one suggestion which, which came from Professor Dr. Amina, Amina Tahseen, which said that the madrasas should be modernized. I mean, there is no way out uh, not to do it, especially with regard to the teaching of subjects like physics, mathematics, and other subjects. Uh, Dr. Najeeula pointed out that financial incentives maximize the possibility of empowerment among minorities. Uh, with regard to the fifth session, which was uh, focused on Urdu and Madrasa education, chaired by Professor Abdurrahim Vijapuri and co-chaired by Dr. Abdul Qayyum, uh, there was a there was a very uh, uh, very informative and very uh, uh, well researched paper on by Dr. Samina Kausar, uh, who pointed out that all knowledge is Islamic, in the sense that there is no discrimination between religious and secular knowledge in Islam. So, I mean the 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 distinction which is made is is artificial in the sense that when it was said Ikra, it was not it was neither uh, secular nor it was uh, religious. Uh, Muhammad Rafi, one of the papers who, uh, one of the, uh, uh, presented a paper on what he said as Kerala model of madrasa modernized uh, system. He said that this, the, the spending within these uh, uh, Kerala madrasas is done with what he called as ikhlas, sincerity. And this should, this has the potential to be imitated in the rest of the country. Uh, there was a, a paper, paper by Umar Jalis who gave an insider's view of the, uh, of, of the madrasa education 
and, and employment challenges. Uh, Sajida Sultana uh, gave his, her, her paper was a very interesting paper on how modernization is compelling the madrasa teachers to pick up some English. You know, uh, then Professor Kayum, uh, uh, you know, raised Professor Kayum as as co-chair was, uh, I mean, very critical and very uh, had a lot of reservations with regard to the madrasa education system by saying that this madrasa education system is disconnected from the outer world. Uh, the the last session, the tec last technical session, uh, the sixth session was titled as Girls Education Among Minorities. This was chaired by Professor Srinivas Reddy and Professor, Professor Kishore. Uh, a very inclusive session, uh, one would say. Uh, Dr. Akhtar Parveen suggested that educating girls will only help them to face new challenges. There is no way out of this. Uh, Mary Jones pointed out that Islam per se cannot be blamed for uh, putting restrictions on educational, you know, acquiring education for, for girls. Uh, she, had, she, she made a very, uh, uh, very interesting observation by saying that all great Muslim scholars had educated mothers. Uh, there were, uh, the chair remarks by Professor Reddy uh, argued that there is, you know, no bar for seeking education for uh, knowledge in Islam. And uh, uh, it's, it's simply the lack of political will of certain governments which is uh, debarring them from uh, you know, implementing, the reservation, implementing the policies which, have already, which are already in place. Uh, she, he also, Professor Reddy also uh, had a hope from the new political firmament which is coming in India in the form of, uh, in the name of Ahmadmi, in the name of common man. Uh, Professor Kishore, in his concluding remarks, uh, argued that the girls' education, uh, unfortunately, with regard to the Muslims, stops at high school. So there is a need to, uh, you know, get it beyond that uh, high school level. Uh, he also pointed out uh, the problem regarding the, uh, regarding, regarding the uh, marrying of young girls among Muslims in old Hyderabad to the, to the old sheikhs of uh, Gulf. Uh, Professor Vijapuri, in the end, in his very humorous and informative uh, manner, uh, suggested that there should have been some paper which should have been, which should focus totally on uh, Dakani uh, way of saying all things. Uh, this is a brief, I think, uh, uh, illustration presentation of what uh, the papers were all about. Uh, I hope I have been able to make some justice to it. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Fayaz, for the report. Now I request our honorable chief guest, Dr. Khaja Mahmud Shahid, sir, to address the gathering. Respected uh, Professor Kishore, Professor Amna Kishore, Professor Ahmad Uzzah Saab, Dr. Kaniz Zahra, head of the department, Professor Abdul Rahim Bejapuri, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, delegates and students. Uh, let me apologize for being late to come to this uh, majority function. Uh, we had some other commitments which continued beyond the allotted time. Hence, we could not come as here, me and Restar Saab. And uh, I, my own behalf, on his behalf, express our apologies for the same. <coughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when I came to the inaugural session, I could not stay back uh, to listen to the speech of uh, Professor Kundu, the keynote address which he presented. Now I heard the summary of the lecture which he delivered and I read it in the newspapers also today. And I'm sure and I believe that it was a very thought-provoking and informative and very well-received address, as the repertoire has just told us. 
I congratulate the Department of Political Science and Public Administration for organizing this seminar in collaboration with the Ministry of Minority Affairs of the Government of India uh, on a topic which is of course uh, important, which has been important ever since I have been hearing about this subject. And uh, without doubting the importance of the topic and its relevance, I would like to add that there have been number of discussions, seminars on this topic, at least to the, to the best of my knowledge. And there have been discussions about the Muslim education, women education, madrasa education, uh, integration of madrasa education with the modern education. All these things has been uh, talked about in different seminars and different discussions and conferences. In the recent past, I have had the occasion of attending one such uh, a seminar about two months back in Chennai, and then followed by a similar thing, a conference on Muslim education in Calicut. And of course, today again, in the last two days, again, we have been discussing on this important topic. And I'm sure as the repertoire has given his report that very, very important aspects have been discussed. Uh, to the best of my understanding and knowledge, I do not find any policy document in Muslim education. There have been a statement, there have been reports, there have been mentions here, there have been mentions there, but there is no per se a policy document on Muslim education. There might have been some uh, initiatives by the government of India or by individuals or NGOs I do feel that perhaps the time has come that a comprehensive policy statement should come on minorities education exclusively. Because again I have seen that when we start discussing uh, Muslim education, uh, of course uh, uh, we get so many other related issues which come into, 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 into our consideration. For example, security. Somebody has discussed security just now, it has been mentioned. I'm, I'm sure it's a very important topic, security, physical security, religious freedom, all these things are very important and they have impact, uh, but sometimes they get the center stage, they got the center stage and education uh, becomes the secondary thing. So focusing on education, I feel there's a need for uh, a comprehensive statement. Maybe this seminar may recommend to Government of India, Ministry of Minority Affairs, and through Ministry of Minority Affairs to maybe the Ministry of Human Resource Development or any other relevant uh, association or body or organization to sit down and give a comprehensive policy statement. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, so many such documents on other subjects where policy, say industrial policy of government of India or other policy, uh, things are keep coming to, to, the, to our knowledge. We have some mention here and there, say for example, I think, uh, the first time in a government document uh, in 1986 new education policy there has been a mention that new Buddhists and Muslims are educationally backward. Perhaps, I do not know, Kishore Sahib is noting perhaps that for the first time it came to, the, to be noted that Muslims and edu new Buddhists are educationally backward. And subsequently other reports and other commissions have been saying the same thing time and again. Uh, and there have been announcements of certain majors, uh, for example, pre-metric scholarship, post-metric scholarship, or uh, opening colleges into minority concentrated districts, uh, like that, and in 15-point program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the program and schemes are being uh, launched uh, by the government of India and by state government, and of course there are NGO efforts, you have heard about the Kerala model and other models. Uh, these programs, I will just talk a, few, a minute later about these programs, very briefly. Uh, but these programs cannot replace a policy document. This program cannot replace a policy document and policy document will be a, a, a sort of a perspective plan for us. And nowadays, uh, experts from the uh, discipline of public administration will agree with me. There has been talk, there has been talk, there has been ex uh, insistence on policy planning uh, and, and administration and management uh, documents also. So policy planning and administration and management scheme, all this, and budgeting. Policy planning, budgeting, 
etc etc so a document can include policy budgeting and other things etc etc so it will be a comprehensive can be a perspective plan for 20 years maybe for 10 years and which should be followed should not be confined uh, to the whims and fancies of a, a particular government, a particular minister, a particular head of the institution. It should be an accepted document for next 10 years or 20 years. I wish that your seminar may consider one of the resolution which they want to uh, send to the government of India that they should uh, launch or initiate or a policy document on what they want to do, what status we all know. We have been time and again talking about this. As I said, in 1986, we have been told that Muslims are uh, educationally backward community. Uh, Sachar committee used the term socio-religious community, SRC. They used the word socio-religious community and gave data and figure that in this area, in this area, this area, this SRC is lower or less than others, except the primary education where uh, Muslim SRC is slightly higher. Other, another category, they have given us this figure. So this status is known and uh, I am repeating myself that it should be a policy document. Now having said that, uh, I would like to move on to the schemes and uh, other documents, other programs which uh, have been <coughs> launched time and again. Uh, and uh, there are two aspects about that. Before I, go, before I go to these two aspects, I must uh, uh, like to highlight that after Sachar Committee's report, there was a Fatmi Committee report. And this Fatimi Committee report was set up, uh, was, was of Ministry of Human Resource Development exclusively because Sachar Committee was moved to Minority Affairs and they took over a report and they started implementing it. Uh, but exclusively for implementation of man, uh, taking care of minority education, Fatmi Committee uh, was set up and they gave a very detailed report in terms of what can be done and they gave a specific program, say for example, Jami Media Islamia, this, this, this should be done. For Modern Azad National University, this, this should be done. For Aligarh Muslim University, there should be one center, four center, three center, five center. So this Fatmi Committee report is more specific in terms of education programs and scheme. And uh, unfortunately, not much attention is being paid toward that report. We keep on talking about such a committee and such a committee, and it's rightly, rightly so. I'm not uh, uh, blaming that, but we should move beyond that. Why I'm saying so, for example, we in this university, in Madanadat National University, we get funding under such a committee, and which is basically Fatmi Committee's recommendation that Modern Azad National University should be given so many thousands of crore for polytechnics, for schools, and so on and so forth. AMU should be given so much of money for Mazapuram Center or for Murshidabad Center first thing. Now it's our duty that these things are there, these documents are there, funds are there. Now our, you know, my university or Javi Mijas University or AMU's responsibility to make use of it. Make use of it and uh, make full use of it, get money, implement it, Manage it. Now here come the issue, manage it. Now we are lacking in management. Money is coming from Government of India, the schemes are there from Government of India. For example, Madanazad National Urdu University, ladies and gentlemen, we get land from the state governments. Like Aligarh Muslim University got land from the state government. Bihar, they got land from Kerala, they got land from West Bengal government. We got land from say Jammu and Kashmir government. We got land from Haryana. And for <coughs> operationalization of various institutions, we get money from central government. So what I am trying to say, we get resources from either from the state government or from the central government. Now our responsibility is now only to manage it, to manage all these resources. And if we fail in managing these resources, it's my fault. It's none, nobody else's fault. And it should be not wise, it not be just, it not be fair to point out fingers towards somebody else if I fail and if I fail miserably in managing my affairs. So it is gentlemen, what I am trying to say that there are such program post such uh, there are such uh, like Fatmi committee and other thing where we can make full use of it, which we are not able to do it, unfortunately. And uh, uh, reasons may be many. There may be shortcomings in the schemes itself. There may be shortcoming the execution. There may be shortcoming in the structure and something like that, or maybe management, or maybe monitoring, so and so forth. But my responsibility is as a community leader or the university uh, management that we must see that where are the shortcomings, suggest to them, get it plugged, 
that it uh, 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 removed and see to it that all these resources which are being provided to us should be implemented and results should be uh, available to the community. I think some paper was presented some in the, that, uh, that uh, the, I think Mr. Professor Kundu was referred to somebody, if I heard correctly, that the investment is not yielding into the desired output which should be there. The investment which is being made for minorities education is not resulting in the desired result or desired